I've been an educator now for almost 20 years, and one of the things that used to happen to me often is that I would say, you know, the student's doing a really great job, except there's this one piece I can't quite capture. And what I love about competency-based education, it really presents the full picture of the student. So not only what they know and their skills, things that we think about like medication administration, but it also captures their attitudes, their motivations and self-perceptions. It articulates things that we've always assessed, but never could assign to any evaluation. First, I think it's important that we start with a definition understanding what competency-based education actually is. And AACN has a wonderful definition, so let's start with that. Competency-based education is a system of instruction, assessment, feedback, self-reflection, and academic reporting that is based on students demonstrating, and that's key, students demonstrating that they have learned the knowledge, attitudes, motivations, self-perceptions, and skills expected of them as they progress through their education. Okay. So in order to better understand what competency-based education actually is, there are really six elements that we can use to compare it to traditional or structure process type education. And those six elements include culture, instruction, assessment, grading, pace, and progression. So let's talk about culture first. So in the traditional approach, we focus on the group. We focus on a didactic experience in a large lecture class. When we think about competency-based education, this approach is more individualized, and we think about the full learning experience. So not just the classroom, we think about what happens in clinical and other possible learning environments. Now let's talk about progression. So in the traditional approach, we think about progression based on a list of skills or a list of elements that we designate in the classroom. When we think about competency-based, we're focusing on what the student can do and how we make them practice ready. So those elements that indicate mastery are actually gonna come from our practice partners and from the essentials and from our other documents that really let us know what do the students need to do. And progression is based on how they're able to accomplish those tasks. When we think about instruction, in the traditional approach, the teacher is the only person that delivers the information. But when we think about competency-based, again, we're making the student practice ready. So we're gonna utilize our leaders that are in the community. We might utilize other peers in the classroom, but we recognize that this is a community experience and we are learning together and we are giving them the benefit of all kinds of resources, not just the person that's in front of the classroom. One of the most important differences between competency-based education and traditional is how we approach the assessment process. In a traditional format, we set a time for when the exams are going to be, and students have one time, that one time, to really demonstrate that they're able to meet the standard. However, in competency-based education, we really think about moving the student towards success. So we use a lot of formative assessments. So formative assessments are the assessments that we make along the way that help prepare them for a summative assessment at the end. So we're really coaching them through the process and allowing them to move towards success. So not a one and done, an often, a check-in to make sure that students are ready to progress. And if ultimately they're not successful, they don't have to go back and repeat the entire exam or the entire checkoff. They only work and remediate in the sections where they're having trouble. So it represents a very different way to really evaluate student progression and success. So now let's talk about one of the elements that are most important to most students, grading. So in the traditional approach, grading is norm referenced. We tend to assign A, B, C, D, E, F type grades. When we think about competency-based assessments, however, we're focused on achievement of the competencies. Either you can do it or you don't. So more often there'll be elements of pass-fail, um, and when students are not successful, again, we go back and we coach towards success. So we find out the parts that they're missing or they're struggling with, and we work on that, and we're moving them towards being able to achieve competencies, making sure they're practice-ready and they can do the work that's required of them. And finally, let's talk about perhaps the most controversial part of competency-based education, and that's the idea of pace. So in a traditional program, we are really outlined by semesters or quarters. So we have a finite amount of time that students are able to complete and move forward. In true competency-based education, time is not the variable. 
So students are able to go back and repeat whatever it is that they need to be successful. Now at this point in time, AACN is not advocating that we move to time variable education. The reality is we're on semester-based programs or quarter-based programs and that is likely not to change. However, we can think about ways that we can allow students to progress at their own pace within the parameters of a semester. So perhaps when they're ready to move towards checking off on those competencies, that we allow them to do so. They may not need to wait until the end of the semester. So that part can still be time variable. Advancement is based on when they meet the competencies, but one important element to consider is how do we support the student outside of class? So we think about what time it would take for those wraparound features, for support services, for tutoring, for mentoring. All of that needs to be included when we think about pace and progression. One of the most important elements when we think about the whole teaching and learning process are the faculty. They determine, aside from the students, quality of the program, hands down. So what has to change about the faculty perspective? Instead of thinking about our role as the sage on the stage or even the guide on the side, we have to think about faculty as a coach. So when you think about a coach who's coaching a team, there's someone who motivates the team members to work towards a goal, and that is what we're doing. So we need to check in often with our students and our learners to make sure that they're on a path towards success. We want to make sure that we're providing those formative assessments because we believe in their ability to achieve the outcomes. We want to be passionate about where we're trying to get them to go. If we don't believe in the mission, if we don't believe in the learning outcomes and goals, the students aren't going to believe it either. That is our job. We are coaching students towards becoming the nurse they always wanted to be.